In lecture five of module one, we'll continue to look at the conventional techniques for evaluating phosphorus release from soils. And this time, we will be looking at the soil fractionation procedures. Now, why do we do soil fractionation? See, the total P in a soil is chemically held in different forms. And these forms are best understood by sequential fractionation procedures. The assumption is that chemical reagents preferentially extract discrete forms of P. See, the chemical P forms are operationally defined and subject to broad interpretations. However, P fractionation offers a convenient means for obtaining significant information on the P chemistry of salts. The first suggestion of P fractionation was by Dean as early as 1938. Here are some fractionation schemes that have evolved over time. They include the Chang and Jackson procedure, the Williams et al. procedure, the Higlitz and Leclema procedure, and the Van Eyck procedure. Now let us look at the Chang and Jackson procedure first. There is a series of extractions. It's a sequential extraction te technique, beginning with one molar ammonium chloride, which removes the water-soluble P and the loosely bound P and some exchangeable P. And then this is followed by a 0.5 molar neutron ammonium fluoride extraction and then a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide extraction, followed by a 0.25 molar sulfuric acid procedure, then the citrate dithionide procedure, and the last fraction is a 0.5 molar ammonium fluoride solution. Now, what it has done here is uh, from the loosely bound, we move on to aluminum P, Iron P, calcium P, the citrate dithionite gives the occ uh, occluded iron P, and the ammonium fluoride gives the occluded aluminum P. See, note previously there were no methods that were available for the fractionation of soil inorganic P into each of the four principal chemical pools. There were, of course, some concerns on the CNJ procedure. The ammonium fluoride did not really distinguish between aluminum and iron P, particularly in calcareous salts and sediments. And some P solubilized by ammonium fluoride was reabsorbed by calcium fluoride during the extraction procedure. So later, modifications were developed to resolve these problems and also to accommodate other research needs. Some of modifications, you have the Higlitz and Leclema procedure. It begins up with one molar ammonium chloride, which removes loosely bound calcium as well as carbonates, followed by a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide procedure. That is, it removes the iron and aluminum bound P, and the 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid removes the calcium and magnesium bound P. It was found that removal of calcium carbonate by ammonium chloride is necessary to achieve satisfactory discrimination between iron and aluminum P and calcium P in calcareous sediments. The Headley et al. procedure is a very famous, uh, one of the more famous procedure fractionation techniques. It begins with an anion exchange resin, uh, removing mostly biologically available PI, that is an inorganic P. The 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide will remove labile inorganic P and labile um, organic P. The 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide um, is a measure of PI and PO held by chemically uh, sopped to iron and aluminum components. 
then when the solution is sonified, that is the sonification of the fraction, the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide fraction, um, it removes, it, you have the PI and PO held within the soil aggregates. When it's followed by a one molar hydrochloric acid, what you get is mainly apatite type P. The hydrochloric acid, sorry, the sulfuric acid and the hydrogen peroxide, which is the last in the stage of the fractionation, the sequential extraction, uh, the P fraction is the more chemically stable organic P and the insoluble inorganic P forms. This scheme is used to identify the soil P fractions, which are altered by cropping practices. Redistribution of P in soils can be inferred, that is, the inorganic P moving to immobilized PI or PO forms or mineralization of immobile immobilized forms. Some objectives of soil fractionation. Obviously, we cannot go through all the details, but here are just some of them. Um, P fractionation provides an insight into the fate and transformation of P added to the soil as fertilizer or manure, and it estimates P availability to plants. It also estimates the potential for P movement by erosion or leaching. And finally, fractionation will provide inter information on interaction between sediment P and the overlying water. Let us look at the P forms in soils and sediments. First, you have the loosely bound P, that is the labile or exchangeable P. Then this is followed by the iron and aluminum bound P. The next fraction in the sequence, sequential extract will be the calcium and magnesium bound P. And then you have minerals and resistant organic material um, that are resistant to previous extracts. Now here's a fractionation scheme. Just to explain what this whole thing looks like, you start off with a soil, and then if the first step is the ammonium, chlor um, ammonium chloride extraction. Take 20 ml of uh, the extractant, one molar ammonium chloride, and with two hours of shaking, that results in the labile peat form. The next sequence, uh, sequential extractant is the ammonium sodium hydroxide extractant, um, 20 ml of which is shaken for 17 hours and it results in the inorganic P. Now, when you digest the inorganic P, you convert it, sonicate, uh, convert it to total P, then the total P minus the inorganic P is a measure of the organic P in this particular fraction. The hydrochloric acid P is the next fraction, and this is a measure of a calcium and magnesium P. And finally, the residual P can be obtained by ignition of the residual soil, that is the soil after removal of all the other fraction, ignited at 550 degrees centigrade. And this residual P, as we have mentioned earlier, is primarily organic bound P. Uh, here I would like you to note one thing, that the hydrochloric acid P is a measure of calcium magnesium bound P, but you have to remember that is our original definition stated that it uh, represents mainly appetite, but in an impacted, in a manure impacted soil, this is simply cal loosely bound calcium and magnesium P. Now, there are some modifications that have been made to the HNG scheme. Uh, changes in soil to solution ratio from 1 to 1,000 in the HNG scheme to 1 to 10. Repeated extraction with one molar ammonium chloride for lake sediments and also single and multiple extractions for manure impacted soils. Now, another modification that has been made 
is to replace the one molar ammonium chloride with one molar KCl at a 1 to 100 soil to solution ratio. Now, when we do modifications from the original procedure, we also have to deal with associated problems when we are comparing data. Now, fractionation schemes, as I've mentioned earlier, are operationally defined. So comparisons of fractions using the same method yields valuable information, but comparison of fractions from different studies need careful evaluation. In other words, what is published in literature by one person or one set of authors cannot be compared with the data from somewhere, someone else unless the procedures used are exactly identical. One major problem, ratio changes. So we have talked about that in the water soluble P ratio changes and the impact on P values in module one, lecture two. The second is replacing any one of the extracting reactants with another. To give you just an example, replacing one molar ammonium chloride with one molar KCl may influence subsequent fractions as well. So that is why we call uh, the fraction schemes as operationally defined. And that is why we have to be extremely careful when we decide to use these schemes um, and compare data by various authors. There are other comparison problems besides what we have just discussed. The order of extractions use of the chelating agents as an extractant, the methods of P analysis, colorimetric versus ICP, we have discussed this before, the composition of P with a chemically determined fraction may vary with regions. Then wetland salts, upland salts, stream sediment comparisons, they could be highly variable in soil property, Therefore, interpretation of fractionation data from different studies must be made with caution. And I cannot but emphasize this once again, interpretation of fractionation data from different studies must be made with caution. What I've also done is given you some of the references that we have mentioned earlier. Uh, to help you in looking for uh, the various, uh, if, if you need to look into the details of uh, the various techniques and the practical applications as discussed by various authors. So the